Hey gang, if you haven't checked my previous manga animation video, make sure you do. This tutorial is based on that video. So after posting that video, I had asked you all to choose the panel which I'll be making a tutorial on. Well, it seems like you guys want to learn parallax effect. You ask, I deliver. Welcome back to another cool manga animation tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to learn how to make parallax animation just like this. Before heading into the video, you know what to do. Just hit the subscribe button and turn your notifications on. It's quite rare to find a tutorial channel on YouTube. Don't miss me out. Without wasting time, we'll jump right into the tutorial. Many editors know what a parallax effect is, but I'll still give a quick intro. Imagine yourself going on a road trip in your dream car. Now if you see towards your right, you could see the trees moving opposite to your direction obviously, but the trees in the front move faster than the trees in the far back. This effect is called a parallax effect. Here are two more clips representing a parallax effect. I don't want to go more about the actual definition and theory. Now that you've understood what a parallax effect is, we are going to be doing the exact same for our manga animation. Let's open up our good old After Effects and create a new composition. Name it whatever you want, I'll call it Parallax Effect. Use this standard HD settings, frame rate to 60 and duration to how long you want the animation to be. Once you are comfortable with the settings, hit OK. Import your files. I have a background and two characters. First drag your background layer into the timeline. Click the layer and hit S on the keyboard to open up scales and scale it to fit your composition. Since we are going to do a horizontal parallax effect, Ensure that the background is long enough so that we can freely move it towards the direction we want. Scale it slightly longer than the composition. Now we'll have to divide this background into layers. So the ground must move faster. The trees in the background should move slightly slower. And the mountains in the back should move even slower. And the mountain in the very last should move the slowest. Which means we'll have to mask out these parts from this background layer. To mask this layer, we should be able to visualize the whole picture. We'll scale it back to fit into the screen mask all the elements and finally scale it back to our previous version. Click the layer and hit Ctrl plus D to duplicate the layers. If you are a beginner, like really really beginner to After Effects, I'll recommend you to watch my previous tutorials before watching this. If you are familiar with all basics of After Effects, you can continue this video. This video is still beginner friendly. So now duplicate the layers and rename it. Pick the pin tool from above. I'll start by masking the ground layer. Don't worry, you don't have to be 100% accurate. We'll be feathering the mask in the end so it'll blend in. Just mask the layers as accurate as you can. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'll speed up the masking process. We've masked the ground layer successfully. Now for the next layer, we are going to mask the trees. You might wonder why I only have one layer instead of duplicate layers for each trees. Well there's a reason is, all the trees are going to be moving at the same pace since they are at the same distance from our perspective. So we can mask all trees in the very same layer. Again, my masking might look really bad it's because the image I picked was a real life image, but as I said, the masking need not be perfect. Mask all the trees without changing into another layer. Let's speed up to save up time. Similarly mask our hill. And mask the hill in the very back. Lastly mask out the sky. Now we can't just jump into animation, we have one intermediate step. The painting.
Now that we have each layer masked accordingly, we'd need to paint off the unnecessary replications. For example, if the trees appear in the hill layer, we should paint off the trees. Ground layer is at the top of everything else, so there's no need to paint anything in there. The tree layer doesn't have any other layer overlapping it, so it doesn't require painting as well. If I double-click into the hill layer, in the background, you can notice that the trees appear in there as well. We should get rid of the trees here. Double-click and come into the hills layer. Pick the clone stamp tool. Wait, why didn't I pick up the paint tool? This is because paint tool can only choose one color at a time, while a clone stamp tool can copy a region and paint another region using it. I've explained clone stamp tool in this video in more detail. Check this video if you need more clarity. So what we are going to do is, adjust the brush size from the right panel and hold Alt on the keyboard and click the region you want to copy. Now paint the trees with the copied region. You have to do this step repeatedly because the trees will start appearing again if you keep on painting. Now do this repeatedly until you paint all the trees off of the layer. I've painted the trees off from the hills layer. Now if you notice, the trees which we masked earlier look sharp and doesn't really look good. It stands out a lot. This can be fixed by feathering its edges. Open up this arrow mark in the tree layer. Open up masks. Now open up the first mask. Adjust the mask feather. Now if you see, the first tree has been blended in with the background. Adjust it according to your preference. And do this same to all the masks within the tree layer. In the same way, feather the masks of the ground layer as well. As I said previously, I painted really bad in the background. I'll fix it later on. Now again we've to paint off the trees appearing in the farther hill layer. Use puppet pin tool and paint off the unnecessary elements. Let's scale all the layers back to normal. Select all layers. Hit S on the keyboard and scale it back. Time to fix the bad painting which I did. Instead of plain smoke and fog, I'm going to copy these trees using clone stamp tool and duplicate it more. Finally it looks a lot better than before. If you want to do parallax effects on your own, try to avoid real life backgrounds. Try going for vector backgrounds which can be masked easily. The background setup is ready. Now drag in Naruto into the timeline and mask him. I'm not going to animate Naruto in this tutorial, so I'll mask him as one single layer. Now scale and position him in the scene. I'm importing a moon to place Luffy on. Import both. I'm scaling the moon. Importing Luffy and masking him. Position Luffy properly and we are finally ready to animate. Parallax is a 3D animation which means all our layers has to be 3D. Let's start by creating a new camera. Right click, hover over to new, and select camera. Make sure two node camera is selected and hit OK. You'll get this warning saying camera and lights do not affect 2D layers. Just hit OK. We are going to make all our layers 3D anyway. We need a parallax controller, that is, a null layer. Right click, hover over to new, and click null object. Rename it to controller. We'll be using this layer to adjust our camera. Go into two views from this option. Let's first make all the layers 3D. Select all layers and click this cube icon to turn all the layers 3D. Now if you notice, the viewpoint of the null object is in the center, but the camera is present over here. 
Our first objective is to bring the point below to the camera's point of view. To do this, parent the null object to our camera. Then hit PE on the keyboard to open positions of the null object. You'll notice that the Z-axis has the value which makes the point to be at center. Reset it to zero. Now the camera and our null point is at the same position. Now unparent the null layer. Then, select all the layers including the camera and parent it to our null object also known as our controller. The logic behind this is simple. We are going to distance each of this layer from our camera such a way that the ground layer will be near to the camera, the trees will be little far away, the mountains will be even more far. Time to begin positioning our layers. First let's plot Naruto. Naruto is the nearest to our camera. Select Naruto layer and unparent him from the null layer. Now select the null layer. Hit S on the keyboard to open scales and increase the Z value. This line is our Naruto layer and we are fixing him away from the camera. Don't move him a lot away. As you can notice, while we are doing this the scene is unaffected because we are simply moving the characters in the Z-axis. Z-axis will not be displayed in our default view. Now Naruto is this far away from the camera. Next select the ground layer. Again do the same process. Unparent the ground layer. Select the null layer. Just increase the Z value more. I'm moving only a little because Naruto is standing in the ground, so both the layers are same distance from the camera. Next select our trees layer. Unparent it from our camera. Now scale the Z value more. Here's a quick breakdown of what's happening. This first line is our Naruto layer. And he's this particular distance away from the camera. The second line is the ground layer. And this is the distance. Similarly this third line which we scaled right now represents the trees layer. Which is even more away from the camera. Hope you are able to understand the concept behind this illustration. In the same way, I'm unparenting the hills layer and scaling the Z value more followed by the Far Mountains layer. Then finally the Moon and Luffy because Moon is the farthest from the camera logically and scientifically. Here's the distance of each layer from the camera for your reference. For the last layer, it's just a sky and I feel it's better to keep it static. So I'll just unparent it and not scale the null layer at all. After scaling each layer away from the camera, go back to one view. Now click the null layer and hit P on the keyboard to open position. Let me move the Y axis to show you how our parallax effect looks like. As you can see, Naruto moves faster when compared to the trees in the background and the hills. You can even adjust the Z values here if you want a parallax zoom. You can see the difference. This looks more cinematic, and it looks like the camera is moving in a 3D field. If you aren't able to see a good result while moving all of this, the reason could be because of how long you fit each element away from the camera. If you had followed my video, I'd have kept the distance of trees and hills more away from the camera. The farther you keep, the better result you'll get. Don't go overboard. If you're satisfied with your parallax effect, create a keyframe in the start of the timeline, move few seconds apart on the timeline and adjust Y-axis if you want a horizontal parallax motion, or adjust the Z-axis if you want a parallax zoom. And here we go. We get this beautiful result. If you want to make this better, watch my composition video and change this to this. Hope you guys found this tutorial helpful. If you want to see more such tutorials in the future, hit the subscribe button and turn the notifications on. As usual, I've linked the free project file of this tutorial in the description. Thank you so much for 1000 subscribers, it really means a lot and motivates me to post more tutorials for you gang. As requested by many, I kept this tutorial short and simple, so if you are stuck at some point of this tutorial, feel free to post the timestamp of this video and comment your query. I'll be happy to help. Until next time, this is Roni, signing off.